Mining continues to be one of the most profitable industries on the planet. With a rich history, mining has always been a popular endeavor worldwide. It's evolved a lot over time, though, and the machines being used to dig, lift, and move the earth have changed over time, too. Join me for today's video. We're going to take a look through 15 of the most incredible mining machines. Number 15. Bagger 288 the Bagger 288 is a behemoth mining machine that's manufactured by Thyssen Krupp, the German company. This Bagger 288 was built for Rheinbraun, an energy and mining firm with the objective of removing overburden at the Hambach surface mine in Germany. Its objective was met. It was able to excavate 240,000 tons of coal per day. It's called a bucket wheel excavator, and it's a type of mobile strip mining machine. This machine was first in production in 1978, and it has a length of about 721 feet, and it's 151 feet wide and 315 feet tall. All in, this bad boy weighs 13,500 tons. It's got 18 buckets, which can each hold 86 cubic feet of material, and it took five years to design this thing, and five years to assemble it, so it was a long time in the making. The weight was worth it, though, because upon completion, the Bagger 288 became the heaviest land vehicle in the world, a title that was previously held by Big Musky, another big mining machine that will make an appearance later on in this video. It held this title until 1995, when the Bagger 293 took it away with a weight of 14,200 tons. The cost to build the Bagger 288 was upwards of $100 million. Number 14. The Captain the Captain, or Marion 6360, if we're going by the official name, was a power shovel completed in 1965. The Captain was built by the Marion Shovel Company, and it's one of the largest land vehicles ever built. The Captain began her career at the Southwestern Illinois Coal Corporation, but it was eventually bought out by Arc Coal. When it was bought out, its colors were changed to red, white, and blue. The Captain had a length of 319 feet, a width of 88 feet, and a height of 210 feet. The bucket has a capacity of 180 cubic yards, and the overall weight of the machine was 12,700 tons. It took 18 months to build this thing and required around 150,000 man-hours. Once she was completed, it held the world record of the largest shovel in the world. The Captain was a well-working, high-functioning machine until September of 1991. A hydraulic line burst and sprayed hot fluids onto the electrical panel, causing a massive fire to break out in the lower works of the shovel. Sadly, the damage was deemed too great to repair, and the captain was scrapped a year later. However, its legacy lives on, as few mining machines can rival the size and incredible power of the captain. Number 13. Bucyrus RH400 as mentioned, with big mines come big machines, and this next incredible mining machine is one of the biggest on the planet. The Bucyrus RH400 is the biggest hydraulic excavator in the world. The machine was launched in Germany by Terex with its debut in 1997. However, in 2010, Bucyrus acquired the Mining Equipment Division of Terex, and in 2011, Caterpillar acquired Bucyrus. The machine is a front shovel excavator weighing in at a staggering 889 tons. The crawler's got a length of 10 meters, and the shovel's got a capacity of 45 cubic meters. Excavators powered by two 16-cylinder Cummins diesel engines with a maximum power output of 4,400 horsepower. The height at the top of the cab is 33.4 feet, and the height of the tracks is just over 9 feet, and the upper structure ground clearance is 10 feet. Pictures and videos of the incredible mining machine show just how big it really is, as well as how powerful. Needless to say, Bucyrus RH400 can get rid of massive amounts of material, since it can hold more in a single scoop than pretty much any other machine. Number 12. Laterno The P&H L2350 wheel loader, also known as Laterno, is a loader that's used for surface mining. It currently holds the Guinness World Record for being the biggest earth mover, and one well, look at this beast of a machine, and it's not hard to see why. The machine was manufactured by Komatsu Limited, a company who's no stranger to big mining machines. With a capacity of 400 tons, it's got an operating payload of 160,000 pounds. It also features a 24-foot lift height and 11.5-foot reach. It's equipped with 2,300 horsepower and a massive bucket. Its fuel tank can hold just over 3,900 liters of gas. And if these specs aren't enough to make you realize the real size of this machine, then pictures will. To see just how big this mining machine is, there's pics of people sitting inside the machine's bucket. 
the people look puny in comparison to this behemoth beast. In fact, it looks like this truck just rolled right in from the land of giants beyond Jack's beanstalk. Needless to say, when this world record holding earth mover gets to work, it moves a lot of earth. Number 11. Komatsu 22HD Unlike open pit mines, underground mines can be tight. They present challenges to the mining industry because not all machines can access those tight spaces. I'm looking at you, Bagger 288. This is where mining machines designed for smaller spaces come in. The Komatsu 22HD is a high-performance front loader brought to you by the United States. Since it's used for underground mines, it boasts a low profile, so it can easily get into those tight underground spaces. Underground mining can be problematic, but not for this machine. This machine is used to transport materials from inside the mines to outside the mines. This mining machine has a length of 11.7 meters and a width of 8.2 meters. It's not one of the biggest contenders on this list, nor is it the heaviest. It only weighs 58 tons, but it does have a hybrid propulsion system, and it uses 550 horsepower to transport heavy loads. So, it can move some pretty heavy stuff, and surprisingly, it can transport loads at a top speed of 27 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast for a mining machine. Its impressive bucket has a capacity of 27 tons. When material needs to be moved from inside a mine, it looks like the Komatsu 22HD is a go-to machine. Number 10. The Komatsu D575A Alright, another Komatsu. The Komatsu D575A is a tractor crawler that's produced in a Super Ripper Bulldozer Ripper configuration, or as a dedicated bulldozer in the form of a Super Dozer. It was in production from 1989 to 2012 and it had a length of 38 feet, a width of 24 feet, and a height of 16 feet. The D575A weighed just over 280,000 pounds, while the D575A3 Super Dozer weighed just over 330,000 pounds. The machines are often called the world's largest production bulldozers, although they don't have that title officially. They were produced in Osaka, Japan, but they were used all over the world. They were mostly used for surface mines in Australia, Japan, and the United States. And they were occasionally used at quarries, though, too, as well as heavy construction applications. This model boasts a blade that was designed to dump, dig, and carry, so it was pretty multifunctional. The blade was 11 feet high and 24 feet wide. In the U.S., the machines were mostly used in West Virginia and Appalachia, where they operated for Alpha Natural Resources and Horizon Princess Beverly Coal. The Super Ripper model was the first to go into production. It was followed by the Super Dozer. And today, they are both used to dig up and move a ton of earth. Number 9. Bucket Chain Excavators Sometimes, the pit floor can prevent specific challenges, so it might be unstable or underwater, and this can pose a safety hazard to those who are mining it. So, it's bucket chain excavators to the rescue, then. Bucket chain excavators are a type of heavy mining machine that are used in surface mining and dredging. They use buckets that are on a revolving chain to move massive quantities of material. They're quite similar to bucket wheel excavators, but bucket chain excavators remove the material from below their plane of movement, so they're especially useful in unstable conditions. On a bucket chain excavator, these buckets are mounted onto a flexible chain. This chain is similar to the blade of a chainsaw. It's different than a bucket wheel excavator because those buckets are on a fixed wheel. This flexible chain gives the bucket chain excavator the ability to remove material that's below the machine's superstructure, unlike other machines which typically excavate topsoil overburden. Bucket chain excavators date back to about 1859 and are attributed to a French entrepreneur named Alphonse Corvaux, but they've grown a lot in size since their debut. Today, bucket chain excavators are really big compared to a lot of machines, but not as big as bucket wheel excavators. Number 8. Hydraulic Excavators Also called diggers, hydraulic excavators are probably one of the most easily recognizable types of mining machines. They have, of course, a lot of different applications like road construction and pipelines, but they make more than their fair share of appearances at mines as well. Hydraulic excavators are known for being really useful in work areas that are more confined. The machine consists of a hydraulic cylinder, a boom, an arm, and a bucket. These parts are actually what do the digging. By adjusting the oil level in the hydraulic excavator, you can change the movement accuracy of the working equipment. The boom part of the machine is often likened to the top part of a human arm, from the elbow to the shoulder, while the arm portion of the machine is a lot like the lower part of a human arm, from the elbow down to the wrist, and the bucket part, well, it's sort of like a cupped hand. 
Hydraulic excavators boast a lot of versatility because the bucket part can actually be replaced with scissors, drills, or even crushing equipment if need be. For this reason, a lot of mining companies understand the necessity for hydraulic excavators and are replacing other types of mining machines with these much more versatile ones. Number 7. Komatsu 14CM27 the Komatsu 14CM27 is a continuous miner and it's made in the United States. Some mining machines are stationary because they're so big, some are mobile because they need to move earth. This one's a little bit of both. It can move on its own and instead relies on a crawler train to move it around. The machine is made up of two parts. It's got a conveyor belt and a cutter train. This machine is required to get through some really tough terrain and because it needs to work its way through some pretty tough rock, it's made from high resistant materials. In fact, the Komatsu 14 CM27 is known for its durability. The machine is equipped with a system that sprays water while the machine cuts the rock. This is important because the water cools the rock which reduces the friction and therefore increases the overall life of the bits. The Komatsu 14 CM27 is a very tough machine with 930 horsepower and it comes in several different models depending on the work required. So it's not just tough and durable, it's also pretty versatile too. Number 6. CAT AD63 The CAT AD63 is an underground articulated truck that's manufactured in the United States. When materials are dug up in the mines, they have to go somewhere, so there's specific vehicles that move the dug up materials out of the mines. The CAT AD63 is tasked with taking large loads of materials from inside the mines to various storage locations outside. This thing is specially designed to produce the highest level of productivity while still maintaining a low operating cost. It's got a length of about 12.5 meters and a width of about 3 meters. It's an incredible mining machine and it weighs only 52 tons, but its real boast comes right from its power. The CAT AD63 is especially powerful. This mining machine is equipped with an engine that generates 780 horsepower, and because it's this powerful, it's also pretty fast. While transporting materials outside of the mine to storage locations, it can travel at speeds of just over 40 miles an hour. Its hopper has a capacity of 63 tons, and the machine is reinforced with steel beams to ensure stability while doing its job. Number 5. Bucket Wheel Excavator Bucket wheel excavators are designed for soft, unconsolidated overburden materials that don't have large boulders in there. They're a continuous excavation machine, and they're capable of removing 12,000 cubic meters per hour. Because they're a continuous digging machine, they're used in large-scale open-pit mining operations. And they differ from other types of mining machines because they use a large wheel that's comprised of a pattern of buckets. These buckets continuously scoop up materials while the wheels turn. They are some of the biggest machines on the planet, as well as some of the heaviest. For example, that Bagger 293, which is a bucket wheel excavator, weighs 14,200 tons and holds the Guinness World Record for the heaviest land-based vehicle ever constructed. The first bucket wheel excavators were manufactured in the 1920s, so they've been around for a while. Not much has changed in their design, but their size has pretty much really grown. They've also been adapted to operate very cold climates too, in temperatures as low as negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit. In recent years, a lot of bucket wheel excavators have been replaced by hydraulic excavators, but bucket wheel ones are still used in really big operations because they can move copious amounts of loose materials fast and efficiently. Number 4. Tunnel Boring Machine Also known as a mole, a tunnel boring machine is a powerful machine that's used to excavate tunnels. They feature a circular cross-section that can bore through a wide variety of rock strata and soil. They come in different designs and can be used for wet and dry soil, sand, or hard rock. They make tunnels of varying diameters, from as little as 3.5 feet to over 58 feet wide. Any tunnel smaller than 3 feet in diameter doesn't typically use a tunnel boring machine. They're usually dug by trenchless construction or horizontal directional drilling. For bigger tunnels, though, tunnel boring machines are a necessity. They can also be used for excavation in non-circular tunnels like horseshoe-shaped, square, or even U-shaped ones. But they're not just for tunneling. These machines are sometimes used as an alternative to drilling and blasting methods in rock and conventional hand mining in soil. Because they create a smooth tunnel wall, it doesn't cost as much to line the tunnel wall, plus they don't disturb the ground as much, and for this reason, the tunnel boring machines are suitable for use in urban areas. 
The cons of the tunnel boring machines is that they're pretty expensive to build and tough to transport. But the longer the tunnel, the more cost-effective the main machine, because these things are more than efficient at drilling and blasting, and therefore reduce the amount of time it takes to complete the tunnel. Number 4. PH Electric Rope Shovel Sometimes mining requires breaking through some pretty tough turf, which is exactly what the PH electric rope shovels are built to do. These incredible mining machines can move materials in the toughest surface mining environments at a pretty low cost per ton, making them not just effective, but cost effective as well. Built by Komatsu, the website boasts that the PH electric rope shovels are engineered for quality and toughness. They've got a state of the art structural design and very advanced control systems. There's a lot of different types of models of electric rope shovels, and choosing the right one depends on what it's being used for. Also known as a mining rope shovel or an electric mining shovel, these machines use electric motors, wire ropes, and a variety of other specialized components to dig and load material in surface mines. They offer spacious machinery decks and twin-leg style handle and dipper configurations. Electric rope shovels are often the preferred loading tool for high-efficiency, high-production mine operations. Plus, they offer sustainability since they boast 100% electric operation. Further sustainability can be reached in the case of wind or solar farm connectivity. So these mining machines leave no carbon footprint, making them an incredibly eco-conscious option. Electric rope shovels are known for having a lower cost per ton versus other models, as well as a long machine design life. Needless to say, electric rope shovels are a very popular mining machine. Number 2. Deep Sea Mining Equipment when we think of mining, we tend to think of massive mines with equally massive machines. Perhaps we think of diamonds or copper, or dark underground caverns where dangers lurk at every turn. And while these images aren't incorrect, we're going to switch gears for a moment here and dive down deep under the sea. Deep sea mining is gaining ground as new technologies allow for this difficult type of mining to become more lucrative. In fact, this one company, Nautilus Minerals, believes that the very future of mining is under the sea. This is due to the fact that the seabed is massive and highly unexplored. Small test samples from different regions show high concentrations of valuable minerals. So if there's good stuff down there, then why not mine it? At least that seems to be the driving force behind one of the deep sea mining companies. The company Nautilus Minerals is a Canadian-Australian company, and in 2015 they revealed some pretty cool underwater mining machines. First of their kind, these deep-sea mining machines are remote-controlled vehicles that can cut up the ocean bed. Unique and efficient, these new deep-sea mining machines were revolutionary, because once built they will literally open up the seabed and all its potential for mining. It's believed that some areas of the ocean bed are ripe with gold, nickel, and copper, and other minerals, but deep sea mining has historically been so problematic that most people don't bother. The cost of deep sea mining has traditionally not outweighed the profit, and if there's no profit, then there's no reason to mine. But the mining machines here, designed by Nautilus Minerals, make it seem like deep sea mining profitability could be a very real thing. There were three machines in total, and the ones by Nautilus Minerals are all 50 feet long, 20 feet wide, and range in weight from 220 to 340 tons. They can be operated remotely from a control room on a ship at the surface of the ocean. The ship is then connected to a central pumping system that can pipe the material up to the surface. The first piece of equipment starts by grinding down the seafloor to make it level. From there, a second piece of equipment, the bulk cutter, grinds away at the slurry until it's fine enough to get sucked up by the pipe. Up above, on board, the water is separated from the rock. Any particle larger than 8 microns is filtered out. Then the water is pumped back into the sea. The machines use a hybrid of gas and oil trenching equipment, as well as continuous mining equipment used above land. Furthermore, the mining of the seafloor is a lot less environmentally damaging than mining the Earth's surface above the water. And so if this is successful, and there is indeed a lot of valuable minerals in the ocean floor, then deep sea mining might be the next big thing. Who knows what else they might find down there? Number 1. Big Muskie As with all industries, it never hurts to pay homage to the icons of the past. Because where would the mining industry be if not for the big machines that came before today's? So the final entry in this video is a shout out to a very iconic, very influential mining machine, lovingly referred to as Big Muskie. Big Muskie was built for coal mining and was a world record holder for a while. It was a Bucyrus Erie dragline excavator that was owned by the Central Ohio Coal Company. 
It was massive, with a height equivalent to a 22-story tall building. It weighed an impressive 12,200 tons, and it was in operation from 1969 to 1991. It had a length of 487 feet, a width of 151 feet, and a height of 222 feet. Big Muskie's model was a 4250W drag line, and it was the only model ever built by Bucyrus Erie. Big Muskie was the largest single bucket digging machine ever created. It was also one of the world's largest mobile earth moving machines. Just to put this mining machine's power into perspective, Big Muskie can hold two Greyhound buses side by side in its bucket. It took two years to build it and more than 200,000 man hours, and at the time it cost around $25 million to build it. When we adjust the price for inflation, it would be the same as $185 million today. It had a massive hydraulic walking feat which it used to move itself over short distances, and most of its systems were electro-hydraulic. However, the main drives were all electric. Big Muskie used a lot of power. When working, it used enough to power 27,000 houses, and it cost tens of thousands of dollars per hour when in use just to power Big Muskie. And there had to be special arrangements with the Ohio Power Companies to accommodate this thing. Big Muskie was used around the clock, with an alternating crew of five. It was cheaper to operate this machine at night, so a lot of emphasis was placed on working through the night. Big Muskie was dismantled in May of 1999 after sitting idle for more than nine years. This was despite the public outcry. People, especially historians, wanted to see this iconic machine moved and preserved as a museum. This was not her fate, though. Big Muskie was scrapped, save for her bucket, which was moved to an AEP Recreation Land Park, where she serves as a memorial to all those who mined coal in southeastern Ohio. Big Muskie is inarguably the most famous mining machine on the planet, which is why it's earned the number one spot on this list of the top 15 most incredible mining machines. I'll see you tomorrow. Watch our Machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.